What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh yeah guys, so today I think we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna touch a mod that we haven't touched at all in this series yet. Last episode we went to the moon, we checked all of that out. I later went back and I used a digital miner and got a whole lot of dilithium. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, just placing the the digital miner down in one spot, dilithium, we ended up with like 7,000 of the stuff. It says it spawns rarely on other planets or whatever. I don't think it's that rare because, yeah, like I said, just placing it in one spot, 7,000 of it, that's a whole lot of dilithium. So anyway, we don't have to worry about that. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to jump into RF tools. Now, the reason why I want to do this is because there are dimension editors and dimlet workbenches and things like that. So rare materials we should technically be able to generate worlds out of Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's been changing this mod pack, but that's kind of what I want to do. Plus, this is a mod that we kind of skipped over, and yeah, we got a bunch of quests to do here. So let's start at the very beginning. So it says, welcome to RF Tools. This mod is filled with gadgets that can be that can make your Minecrafting experience a whole lot better, such as teleporter, storage, the builder, and highly advanced redstone. RF Tool Controllers is also in the pack, which offers even more intricate control over redstone logic. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, RF Tools is a tier 2.5 tech mod, which leads to thermal expansion. Well, we kind of skipped over this. Uh, we didn't really need it at all to get into thermal expansion. But anyway, that's going to give us a smart wrench, RF Tools manual, and RF Tools control manual. Mm hmm. Okay. So we got that all done. That's pretty cool. So some of the first quests are already done here. So Dimlet Parcels, you get these rarely off Endermen. Uh, it says dimlet parcels contain dimlet parts. They drop early from Enderman, like I just said. Uh, we'll take the uh, top loot chest here. And then the builder, I think we got that as a reward at some point. Uh, the builder you can use kind of like a quarry if you wanted to. I don't think we need to do that since we have the digital miner, but that is an option. And we'll go and claim that one as well. So both of those quests are complete. Let's pop this. We get ourselves a smart output. That's kind of cool. And we get ourselves some coconut shrimp. That sounds delicious. All right, so we got that stuff done. So some of the first things that it wants us to do, modular storage, uh, we're never going to use it. I'll just make this off camera, I guess, just to complete the quest. Uh, but that is like an earlier game storage before you get into something like applied energistics. I find it be a little buggy and a little weird to use, but maybe other people like it more. I don't know. Um, the matter receiver though, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to need matter receivers and matter transmitters in order to, uh, go to like the different RF tools, dimensions and stuff. So matter receiver, uh, receiver I before E except after C gotta love English, <laughs> uh, matter receiver sky stone blocks. Oh, we need an IC two teleporter to do this interesting teleportation core. That's not that bad. The teleporter from IC2, however, does require advanced machine casing and frequency transmitter. I mean, I guess this stuff isn't that bad, but I don't think we've had to do any of this yet. So if we search for a teleporter, yeah, we don't have that, but we do have the teleportation core. Anyway, so if we tell it to make this thing, we should be able to put this uh, pattern in here and it'll tell us what it's missing, right? So that is the matter receiver. So receiver, I'm never going to spill this thing right. Uh, next. So yeah, we're missing the teleporter, everything else we have. So the teleporter, we tell it how to make that. We don't want to use these advanced circuits. Um, what are the other things called? I can't remember now. Let's go back in here. Those are called control circuits. So the control circuits, I believe it was the advanced ones. So we'll craft one of those and then we will overwrite what the pattern says that we need here. Okay, so now we have a teleporter. Now I know for a fact we do not have the frequency transmitter, so we'll just go ahead and preemptively make a pattern for that one. And again, I need to replace uh, the electronic circuit here with this guy. Alternatively, I could do the or dictionary substitutions turned on, but I find like the more you do that, the more problems you have with auto crafting down the line. So I've been trying to keep it as strict as possible to use specific items. Anyway, uh, so advanced machine K 
casing. We already have that on auto craft. So we might be good to go here unless those copper cables we don't have on auto craft. I'm not sure. So again, the matter receiver next looks like we have everything good to go except for glass fibery cables. Okay. Where was that at in this recipe? The glass fiber cables. Ah, right here. Okay. So we need this. I'm pretty sure we don't have a recipe for the energy dust. So we'll come back in here and do that. I'm not sure if we have diamond dust. We do not. Okay. So how do we make diamond dust? Man, it seems like it's weird that we're so late in the mod pack and now we're making recipes for IC2, right? That's what it feels like to me. I guess pulverizer works. We need to do one of these guys back into here. This one, this guy, pulverizer. Cool. All right. So we need the pulverizer. All right. We should be able to do that just fine. Uh, anything else in here before we just put the patterns away? Pulverize silver. We don't have a recipe for that. And we are absolutely going to need a recipe for that. So again, we'll just go to the pulverizer and we will do ingot since we have a bunch of silver ingots. All right. Pulverizer. Okay. So we should be good. We'll just need to drop the rest of these crafting patterns in here and should be good to go. Okay. So matter receiver next. Everything good. Ooh, looks like we got everything. Cool. So all of our auto crafting will do what it needs to do. This is probably going to take a minute. So be right back. And we're back. So here is the matter receiver. Awesome. So that actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take, but it did take eh, about five to 10 seconds for it to auto craft. So if we need to make more of those in the future, we should be able to do that whenever we want to. And that's going to be quite nice. Okay, so we get ourselves some Podzol as a reward. Oh, just one piece of Podzol. Just one. All right, let's put all these RF tool items away. I don't need the smart output on me, and I don't need the matter receiver on me at the moment. Okay, so moving on from here, uh, matter transmitter. Yep, so we have a place to receive. Now we need a place to send. This is You work from the matter transmitter to a receiver, if you are unaware. So a matter transceiver or transmitter... This guy should have a fairly similar recipe, and it looks like it is pretty much the same. So if we come in here and we do that button and this button, it should pretty much just work, I believe. Place that guy in here. So matter transmitter should be pretty much all the same thing. Okay. And that one's done. Awesome. So here's our matter transmitter. Cool. So quest complete on that guy. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's do top loot chest, claim it, pop it, and we get ourselves some lava stone, a full stack of it. Pretty sure we've gotten that. No, maybe not. Maybe not. I thought we had lava stone before. Anyway, so now that we have that, we have a handheld charge porter. This is kind of an early game way of teleporting around. I'm pretty sure the advanced charge porter can be bound to several matter receivers letting you teleport between them yeah so that would have been like an earlier game way of us to move around a little bit faster but in order for us to do that we would have to have a matter receivers powered and yeah i don't feel like we missed anything by not using this earlier game so advanced charged porter this guy requires a charged porter which is actually pretty inexpensive all things considered we do that we do this and there we go awesome so that'll charge up once i put it on my hot bar i have it set so it doesn't charge everything in my inventory but yeah now when it's on the hot bar uh the flux networks is charging that up no target set okay well i don't think we're gonna actually be using that so we'll just put that away for now and we'll claim this guy and pop it we get a cow in a jar i think that's our third one now uh, we have at least two. Yeah, we have one here, one here. All right, I guess I'll just put that right here. Do those things talk to each other? Does the toaster in this or this and that connect? I'm not actually sure how that all works, but we'll place the cow in a jar there for later if we ever need to use milk again for some reason. Anyway, so let's move on. So next thing, a dialing device. So this is going to be important to dial to a matter receiver. Yeah, and then we can transmit there. So dialing device, this requires us to have the machine frame 
which do we have the auto craft i feel like we do yeah we have that on auto craft so as long as we tell it to make a machine frame we should be able to make this thing quite easily i don't remember how long that takes to craft seems like that's going pretty quickly though steel is like the longest part of this i need to pre-make up a bunch of steel i'll probably do that here very soon uh, but anyway, we need two redstone torches. And there we go, a dialing device. Easy. We could make a recipe for that, but I'm not sure how many dialing devices we need. So unless we need to mass craft them, I think we'll just leave it alone like that. Okay, so next uh, next loot chest, we get ourselves iron wood chair from a rustic. Eight of them. Bunch of random stuff to fill up our plight and logistics. And we only got three, or I'm sorry, we only got five discs left with the green dots on them. Hmm. Starting to run out of space with all the random stuff that we've gotten. Uh, so the next quest in the quest book here, Destination Analyzer. So this is useful. It probably says in the, in the thing here. Uh, but this is useful. So when you dial to another dimension, uh, if it is one that you're powering and it's not powered, this will tell you, hey, don't transport here. There's not enough power. Uh, you'll die. So anyway, it says the destination analyzer when connected to the matter transmitter enables you to check whether the receiver you're dialing to has power. I believe this also, not only does it tell you if the receiver has power, but if the dimension has power. I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, anyway, so destination analyzer. This is probably pretty close to the same recipe. Yep, and we already have the machine frames made. Uh, machine frame. I'll just go ahead and preemptively craft up like four of those because I'm sure we're going to need those. Oh, we are running low on rubber. Ooh. Well, okay, machine frame. I'll just craft up two more of them then. Okay, we'll let that do its thing. Uh, so now that we have that one done, let's claim the bottom loot chest. We'll pop this one and we get ourselves barbecue pulled pork. Hmm. That also sounds pretty good. Uh, so moving on from that quest, we get ourselves a matter booster. So what does this one do? The matter booster when placed adjacent to a matter transmitter allows it to spend extra RF to get you to your destination safely with it. The matter receiver you're teleporting to can be completely out of power without you dying. Oh, okay. I'm not actually sure I knew about this one. That's kind of cool. So regardless of the matter receiver, you're going to the matter booster will provide power so you don't die. Awesome. I like it. So matter booster. This guy is... Wait, what is this block here? A destination analyzer? Okay, so I guess I need to make another destination analyzer. And that was this guy. Okay. Awesome. So now we have both. Oh, I didn't put that in my inventory. <laughs> Matter booster. Yeah, you have it in my inventory and click off the applied energistic screen for the quest update. There we go. Okay, so we have that done. Let's do middle luchas, clean it, and pop it. And we get ourselves a hollow projector. I believe that's our third one. Yeah. Okay, we'll just put that away. Cool. So now that we have a bunch of this stuff done, now we're going to get into like the more interesting stuff, the Dimension Inscriber, the Dimension Builder, Dimlet Workbench, Dimension Editor, and finally the Phased Field Generator. All this stuff is pretty important for making your own RF Tools Dimension. So pretty much all of these recipes are going to be fairly similar. It's going to be an RF Tools machine frame and various other vanilla stuff. But let's just make one more together and then I will probably do the rest of these off camera here. So Dimension Inscriber... This guy requires us, ooh, a resonant cell frame full. Actually, that's a little bit more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Resonant cell frame. Well, we already have this, but that is not, that's an energy cell resonant. Okay, so this might be something a little bit more complicated. In fact, it absolutely is. Wow, look at all this stuff. Okay, so we're going to need a moonstone, dense steel plate, lapatron crystal, ender electron tube, Pulsating mesh that, wait, really? Pulsating propolis? Is it really going to make us do end bees for this? Holy, really? Okay. Uh, reactor frame, structure frame tier one, infused diamond. That's dimensional shards around diamond. We've already collected a bunch of these, so that's not a big deal. Ultimate control circuit we can make. Uh, Enderium gear, lithrite crystal, easy. Bioplastic, easy. That's just sugar cane. 
Uh, cubic boron nitrate. You're a cubic boron nitrate. I believe we already set this up, right? Boron nitrate. Maybe not. Ooh, my. Okay. So in order to do this stuff, we got to do quite a lot, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and start figuring out what our first step should be to get all of that set up. But yeah, our, um, our crafting core over here is going to get a little bit of use, it would look like. All right, guys. So I was a little overwhelmed by this recipe at the start. There's a lot of items that we need in order to make this resonant cell frame full. Yep. So I was trying to figure out where to start with this, and I guess we should start with the easy ones that we can knock out, and then we'll move on to the more complicated ones, um, like the cubic boron nitrate, which is going to take a little bit of processing power. Uh, I guess we're going to need a bunch of machines set up to actually do this. But anyway, let's start at the beginning, Moonstone. Uh, another thing to note, though, this recipe contains more than nine items, so it would be impossible for us to make a Plight Energistics automatic recipe for this. So this is most likely going to be a manual recipe. Hopefully we don't have to make a bunch of these resident cell frame foals in the future. Otherwise, we'll have to figure out a way to actually auto craft this i'm not sure if there is a way to do that but anyway let's go ahead and move on so probably one of the first things that we should do take a look at this moonstone so a moonstone is comprised of lunar reactive dust which is just lapis but through a resonator big deal and then you need a unstable ingot or a stable unstable ingot so this is an auto craftable recipe here but it's more expensive than the unstable ingot so if you've never seen this before uh, the unstable ingot, you have to craft in a vanilla crafting table with an iron ingot, a stick, and a diamond. Yes. Uh, there is a catch. You When you craft the unstable ingot, you only get 10 seconds, and then it just kills you if you don't craft anything with it. If you drop it on the ground, it kills you. So you pretty much have to craft this and immediately craft whatever you're doing, and it's a race against time. There is a more expensive recipe. You can make the stable unstable nuggets which nine of those turn into one ingot. And this one you can craft with just fine. So this would be the automatable recipe variant of the dangerous unstable ingot. What's on the second page here? Oh, you can turn those back into the nuggets should you choose to. So yeah, we need to make a recipe to make the stable unstable nuggets and then turn those into the ingots. I think that's going to be pretty simple to do. So let's get over here. Yeah, we're on the correct thing. This, we want to make a recipe for this guy and then I'll craft one of these and just fill this all in and there is the recipe for the ingot awesome so now we can just go ahead and throw those into our system like so so we want the stable ingot we're going to craft one of those because when we tell it to craft this most likely it's going to put the wrong item in here so it's saying it wants an unstable ingot we're going to clear that out and we're going to put in our stable unstable and you can see that that works just the same. So the other thing is the lunar reactive dust. We need to make a pattern for this. So I'll switch over to the processing pattern. We'll click on this, do that, and there we go. So off camera, I did add in our resonator over here to be automatable. We have not done that yet at all throughout this uh, series. Yeah, I've been doing everything manually. So I put in four upgrade speeds in here. It's kind of important that you don't go too crazy with the resonator because the more speed upgrades you have in it, the way more power it draws. Yeah. So anyway, uh, for speed upgrades, we could probably go to the 16s and be okay since we have the dragon egg um, GP generator. But anyway, uh, so we have just an interface on top of the resonator and behind, I just have an import bus. Yep. With fully acceleration speed upgrade things on there. So yeah, all we got to do is just drop this guy right into here and we should be pretty much good to go. So I will place the moonstone into here. So if we tell the system to craft a moonstone, we should be good at this point. It might take a little bit of time, but we should be good. Let's go take a look at the resonator, make sure this is working. Oh yeah, that's working just fine. So with four of those in there, that's using 80 GP. That's ridiculous, huh? I think so. Anyway, we can speed this up. It doesn't cost any more GP when you uh, take accelerated like we just did. That'll just make it go faster. Okay, so now we have one moonstone. So we are partway through this. So that's auto craftable. Let's remove it from the list. 
So the next thing is dense steel plates. So that's nine steel plates put into the IC2 compressor, or we could use a pressurizer from Nuclear Craft, but we already have a compressor set up and auto crafting. So let's use this guy. All right, so we want the processing pattern once again. We already have recipes for steel plates, so we should be able to do this and compressor like so. So if I do a dense steel plate, it should be able to craft that up just fine. Again, we are <laughs> kind of low on steel, so we have to start all the way from the beginning and process all of that, but there we go. It's dense steel plate. Let's knock that one off the list. Okay, so our next one is Lapatron Crystal. Uh, these are, I guess, like battery packs or whatever for IC2. Yeah, we haven't really done a whole lot with IC2, so we don't have this auto craftable. Uh, but it is fairly easy to do. We just need the lapis dust. We just need the advanced control circuits. And then we need energy crystal, which is nine of the energy M dust, which I believe we made earlier, put through the compressor. So, I mean, let's start there. Uh, so we go to the lapatron, this guy, this guy. Easy. All right, and then back to our compressor, like so. So I want to make a uh, crystal, the energy crystal. It's at the bottom because we don't have it crafted. Okay, so now we're doing that. So there's our energy crystal. So again, we'll go try and do the Lapatron one. Do this, that guy. And of course, it uses the wrong circuit. So we will make one of these advanced control circuits and put those in its place. Like so. And that should be pretty much all we need to do. I think we have Lapis Dust on AutoCraft already. Uh, yeah, right here. So we have that all set. So we just throw this down here, and we should be able to craft that Lapatron. And it looks like everything is good to go, so we'll tell it to craft it up. And... We have a problem. Okay. So it doesn't like this recipe, so let's cancel this. I will manually craft it. Uh, we're looking for the energy crystal. It did craft another one of those. Okay, so here's a problem. Um, we need to put this, just one of those, right into this pattern and then craft it like that. Uh, Lapotron, I will get rid of this one and place that one in its place. And maybe this one will work now. Let's try it again. Lapotron. It says it has it available this time. So if we start it up, yes, now we'll craft it just fine. Again, that probably comes down to the fact that I am uh, not doing the or dictionary substitutions. But like I said, I find with applied energistics, the more recipes you put in there with the or dictionary substitutions, the more problems you have eventually. I'd rather have specific recipes not work and have to manually do it the first time. Anyway, Lapatron crystals are done. Uh, Ender Electron Tubes are our next one. So we can do that in the Advanced Thermionic Fabricator. We just need to get ourselves some Endstone and the Eyes of Ender. So let's swap this over to a processing pattern. And we'll do this and this. And it looks like we are good to go. So let's do Advanced uh, Thermionic Fabricator. Thermionic? Anyway, so we want Ender Electron Tubes. That should just work. Maybe. There it goes. Awesome. Easy. That was really easy. So pulsating mesh, like I said, we are going to need bees to do this. We need the mysterious combs. Yeah, that kind of really, really sucks. Now, this isn't something that's terrible to do. Like, we can just go to the end, get those bees, put them in apiaries, and chunk load and call it a day. But it's just something that we have to do. Uh, so we'll hold off on that one for a minute. Reactor frame. Uh, steel casings around an atomic alloy. Yeah, we don't have a recipe for that. I thought we might have done that at some point, but apparently not. That's fine. So we can do this, and we should be able to auto-craft that straight away. I believe we have all of those things done. So reactor frame. I didn't need to type it again, but I did. It's fine. Looks like just the one page. Yep, so a bunch of steel. Looks like everything's going to be just fine there. Okay, so reactor frames are done. Structure frame tier one, I know for a fact. I know for a frat. I know for a fact that we have that one on auto craft. 
Okay, so that's done. Infused diamond, we do need a recipe for this because we have never made those before. Let's go ahead and put a recipe down here with our other ones. Okay, diamond. This guy, this guy, that guy. Awesome. So we can knock that one off the list. Ultimate control circuit. We have eight of those. We don't have an auto craft set up for this, but we could set up an auto craft for that. I think I might just make the pattern. Uh, we should have everything auto craftable over here. Everything set up to be done. Let me see if I can get that done real quick. All right. So I couldn't remember how this was set up since it's been a while since we last set up the automatic portion of this. But yeah, our uh, crafting core is up here. And then down below we have conduits. So pretty much this interface takes the recipe that we put in there, pushes it into this chest, and then we extract using the conduits to the various different crafting cores and the pedestals over here. So the way this works is we have it set up. So the insert for the crafting core, we have an item white listed here. So we need to take our elite control circuit and white list that here. We go to the recipe and we look for the ultimate control circuit on the combination crafting. The elite control circuit goes into the core and then the atomic alloys go to the pedestals. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much all we have to do. Whitelist the elite thing over here. And then on these guys, how does this work? These are blacklisting. So we just blacklist the elite on all of these. And I believe they are set up. So they should only receive one item of everything thing else that gets pushed into uh the chest over there so that would be each one of these should get the atomic alloy that really should be everything that we need to do to get that set up and then we just have the pattern here that says it's going to create an ultimate control circuit with one elite control circuit and four atomic alloys so if we come upstairs and tell it to craft we should see everything work correctly uh so we want to do an ultimate we have eight of them i tell it to craft it's going to do all of this we should see all the items get placed there correctly. Oh, I didn't set up the filter for the other thing. So yeah, everything went correctly and we crafted that. However, there is one more uh, thing that we need to set here and that is the conduit going into this interface. Um, maybe I should do it from up above. Let's take a look. Okay, so the conduit going into this interface is on red. And why is that not extracting? I am not sure. Oh, you know what? Maybe it did, and that's just a ghost item. No, it didn't extract, so why not, I wonder. Let's go back down and take a look. So we're extracting on red. Extract. Mm. Yeah, the extract filter that's making the hardened cell frame. Okay, I guess we need to specify the correct item can we do it from here no it doesn't let me do that okay ultimate control circuit we will put on the white list here and that should extract it from up above and then complete the recipe is that it i think that's it it's no longer there anymore so if we look in here we now have nine ultimate control circuits let's try this again just to make sure everything works correctly like it should so we should see four atomic alloys and the lead control circuit in the center and it should craft and get extracted. Perfect. Awesome. So now we can do that whenever we want to. Well, that was pretty simple. Okay. Um, so that one's done. In Derium gear, we might already have this one. Nope, we do not have an Enderium gear. Okay, so that's another processing pattern. So we can just go ahead and do one of these. And we just got to find it into a gear thing. Metal press looks like we got a spot right there. Okay, that's fine. So... And Derium gear, we will craft that. And... Oh, you know what? I think it had to make some Enderium. Yep. All right. So there's our Enderium gear. So we have that one done. Litherite, we have plenty of. 26,000. I don't think we're going to run out anytime soon. Bioplastic, we have that on auto craft already. That just uses two sugar canes. So we can craft that. Cool. So now we're into the more difficult items. So the pulsating mesh, the cubic boron nitrate, and the genetics processor. Did we ever make a genetics processor? I don't see that item in here. That should be fairly simple for us to auto craft. So let's try and craft it. 
So that requires the advanced circuits. Again, we will swap that out for just the advanced control circuit. And yeah, everything else we have set up on AutoCraft, so that is a pretty simple one to do. Here we go. And then we do a genetics processor. And that should craft up quite quickly, I think. Yeah, we just gotta make the engineering circuits. And there they are, genetics processor, awesome. Cool, so cubic boron nitrate. So we need to make hexagonal boron nitrate, put into a pressurizer. The hexagonal nitrate, mm, I remember this is kind of a fun project here. We need boron nitrate solution in a crystallizer. And then that comes from a whole bunch of other stuff, ammonia and boric acid and yeah, there's a lot of machines that we're going to have to set up for this. To make ammonia, you need liquid hydrogen and nitrogen. To get nitrogen, you need a nitrogen collector. Yep, so that is one of those more involved steps. Uh, I don't think we... I know we did some nuclear craft stuff down here, but I don't think we ever did that particular thing. What are we making here? This is calcium sulfate. This was a fun project to do. Uh, we might do the hexagonal boron thing just down here in the same kind of an area. I don't think it makes this big of a footprint, though. Unfortunately, it looks like we've run out of time for this episode, so we'll continue on uh, making the resonant cell frame full next time. Yeah, we'll get the whole auto crafting process for that boron nitrate thing. Yeah, we'll get all that stuff done. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.